Anthony Eden was PM from 1955 to 1957. He could be characterised as a dedicated public servant of 34 years, whose career ended in the bitterness of the Suez Crisis. Anthony Eden was born in 1897 and was from a family of landed gentry. He fought in the First World War and achieved rapid promotion in the carnage of that war. After demobilisation, he studied Persian and Arabic at Oxford and ran successfully for Parliament in the 1923 election at age 26. In 1935, he became Foreign Secretary and in that role was involved in appeasement, which was later seen to be a mistake, but was understandable from a generation that wanted peace at all costs, having fought in World War I. He did resign in 1938 when he saw how Hitler and Mussolini were dangerously emboldened. In World War II, he was again Foreign Secretary and Ambassador to Washington, but the Conservatives under Winston Churchill suffered a landslide defeat in 1945. This was because Labour's manifesto of social democracy, with its slogan, Let us face the future, seemed more forward-looking than help him finish the job. Churchill was PM again from 1951 to 55 and resigned due to ill health. Eden became his successor, called an election and won a convincing mandate of 60 seats in May 1955. He had little time to implement his manifesto's vision of a property-owning democracy, as in 1956, Egypt announced it would nationalise the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal was built by an Anglo-French consortium in 1869, and they improved it for the next 90 years. Egyptian leader Colonel Nasser, a fierce Arab nationalist, saw it as imperialist and supported guerrillas who attacked British troops guarding the Suez. The canal was a vital waterway, and in the hands of a leader becoming ever more friendly with the Soviet Union, this was a threat. France, Israel and Britain under Eden occupied the Sinai Peninsula, but with the United States threatening sanctions and world opinion against him, all three of these nations had to withdraw. Eden resigned in January 1957, humiliated. Overall, this was a long-serving politician who ought to be remembered for playing a crucial role in British foreign policy before World War II, in World War II and after, but is instead haunted by one word, Suez.